A Colorado news anchor was viciously bitten by a dog on live TV during a segment of the Nine News Morning Show in February of 2012. On the day in question, an Argentine Mastiff and its owner were in the station's Denver studio for an interview. The previous day, the dog had been extricated from an icy lake and Nine News was conducting a follow-up report on the dramatic rescue. At one point during the interview, morning anchor Kyle Dyer leaned in towards the animal, at which point it bit her, tearing off a portion of her upper lip. Dyer was unable to speak for 10 days thereafter because her lip needed to be sewn shut in the wake of the bite. The woman later described the incident as a profound experience that changed the way she told stories and approached life in general. By 2014, Dyer's role at Nine News had been scaled back, allowing her to spend more time with her family and focus her professional efforts on storytelling opportunities. In 2016, she announced her departure from the station after 18 years behind the anchor desk. Dyer's facial injury reportedly played a large part in her decision to leave. Today's featured fan shout out is Instagram follower CJ Music Scotland. To appear in our next video, take a pic, rocking your latest merch from theywillkillyou.com and send it in to us on Instagram today. Number 24, Amos Newsom. An Alabama news correspondent was attacked by former Dothan City Commissioner Amos Newsom in October of 2015, as was captured on camera by the news crew. WTVY reporter Ken Curtis had approached the public official outside the Dothan Civic Center in order to question him regarding his controversial 2013 re-election victory. While Newsom himself never faced charges in relation to the election, several of his associates, including longtime girlfriend Olivia Reynolds, either pleaded guilty to or were convicted of voter fraud. Newsom tried to shut Curtis's questions down, but the reporter continued following and questioning him as he walked to his car. The commissioner at one point put his outstretched hand in Curtis's face and pushed him back after he was asked if he planned on resigning. About a minute into the video, after Newsom had grown sufficiently agitated, he delivered a strike to the reporter's face, drawing blood from a small wound on his right cheek. Curtis subsequently warned the commissioner that his actions would constitute assault, which Newsom was ultimately charged with when he was arrested after the video surfaced online. In April of 2018, it was reported that Newsom had been convicted of assault by a municipal court judge, who subsequently gave him a suspended 10-day jail sentence, as well as a $500 fine. The public official appealed the conviction, which initially proved unsuccessful. However, the case eventually ended up back in Houston County Circuit Court, whereupon a judge agreed to dismiss it on the condition that Newsom attend anger management classes and pay court fees. Number 23. Stung on live TV. ABC reporter Lauren Vargas was dispatched to a neighborhood in Phoenix, Arizona that was forced to virtually shut down on March the 21st of 2015 as a result of a bee invasion. According to local residents, the hive had developed on the roof of a woman's house while she and the other occupants were away. One person who found themselves engulfed by the swarm was reportedly stung eight times. Concerned neighbors called 911 and the authorities subsequently instructed people to stay inside until the insects were dealt with. While Vargas was filming a report on the story, one of the bees crawled into her hair. In video footage of the incident, it was clear that the woman immediately noticed something was wrong. She began to squirm as a fire captain attempted to extract the little pest from inside her hair. She then writhed in pain after being stung on the scalp. Although Vargas indicated that the bee sting was incredibly painful, she admitted to laughing at the clip upon viewing it after the fact. Local fire crews reportedly doused the area with a chemical foam to combat the persistent beehive. Number 22. Bridgewater Snowplow Incident A CBS Boston reporter was buried in slush one morning in January of 2022 after drawing too close to a snowplow on its work route. In a video that garnered widespread attention online, WBZ news correspondent Anna Miele was reporting from the side of Route 24 in Bridgewater, Massachusetts. During her live segment, Miele was whacked with a wall of snow from a plow as it passed her in the street. The woman was unharmed and laughed at the incident off as she finished up her report. She subsequently tweeted that she was a safe distance from the road when the plow passed by 
but that it was just a really far-reaching wave of slop. Number 21. Reporter struck by golf ball. Veteran ESPN anchor Sage Steele was seriously injured while reporting on the 2022 PGA Championship in Oklahoma. The incident occurred on May the 19th during the annual golf tournament's first round, which was being held at the Southern Hills Country Club in Tulsa. An errant tee shot hit by Spanish golfer John Rahm, who immediately called four, traveled roughly 840 feet through the air, reaching estimated speeds of up to 180 miles per hour before colliding with Steele's face in brutal fashion. An eyewitness reported seeing the injured reporter on the ground holding her chin with her hands covered in blood. Medical personnel tended to her immediately and she was subsequently taken to a local hospital for treatment. Although Steele declined to specify exactly what the nature of her injury was, she did reveal that she'd lost some of her teeth as a result of the accident. Steele ultimately made her on-air return a few weeks later. Number 20. Kabulcha Cigarette Incident On June the 8th of 2015, Australian news reporter Alex Bernhardt was outside Kabulcha Magistrates Court where a woman by the name of Stevie Jane Kennedy was making an appearance in connection to her pending murder charges. At one point, Bernhardt, along with reporters from other networks, approached a woman pushing a baby carriage on the sidewalk outside the courthouse and asked if she knew Kennedy in some capacity. Rather than cooperate with the Nine News Queensland correspondent, the pram-wielding woman abruptly stubbed her lit cigarette against Bernhardt's face. The latter immediately recalled in pain but fortunately wasn't left with any significant injuries. Bernhardt later commented on the unexpected event, tweeting, just had a woman stub her lit cigarette into my face at Kabulcha Court. Charming! The assailant, later identified as 23-year-old Bianca Jade Cahill, was charged with public nuisance in the aftermath. In August of 2015, it was reported that Cahill had missed a scheduled court appearance and a warrant had thus been issued for her arrest. Number 19. Cat Attack a female reporter was attacked by a cat during a live television broadcast on Fox 8 News in Russell Township, Ohio. The video, which in the years that followed the segment's airing was cemented in viral internet history, started in the Fox 8 studio. Anchor Stacy Bell introduced a case involving a Russell Township couple who were accused of animal abuse, after which the broadcast was turned over to Kathleen Cochran, who was reporting live from a local animal shelter. Immediately following her appearance on screen, Cochran began having noticeable trouble holding onto the cat she had in her arms. The animal then proceeded to express its dissatisfaction with the situation by loudly caterwauling as it tried to wriggle out of Cochrane's grasp. The reporter initially maintained her composure and continued with the story, revealing that the couple in question had allegedly tossed a pair of cats out their car window, killing them. After that, the cat let out an impassioned scream. At which point, Cochrane smiled and remarked, this little guy's having fun. Moments later, the feline exposed its claws and slashed them across Cochrane's face. The woman then dropped the cat on the floor as she burst into tears and held her hand against her face. The broadcast subsequently cut away to a pre-recorded report, but when Cochrane reappeared to close out the segment, she laughed about the unexpected incident, saying, I'm obviously not a cat person. She claimed to have been holding on to the cat for a while and indicated she'd had no issues with it until they went live on air. One of the anchors in the studio punctuated Cochrane's slightly embarrassing ordeal by joking that the video will end up on a reel somewhere. Number 18. Loose Dogs in Palm Beach County In December of 2013, WPBF 25 news correspondent John DeZenitis was reporting on an incident in which a pair of pit bulls had bitten a local boy when he himself was accosted by a pack of unleashed canines. Dezenitis was walking down a dirt road on the 14,000 block of 75th Lane North in Palm Beach County, Florida, trying to capture some B-roll footage of loose dogs. However, a separate group of dogs, who were likewise unfettered, subsequently approached him and tried to bite him Although he was reportedly nipped in the elbow, he didn't sustain any significant injuries during the alarming encounter. 
During an on-air segment in which he described the ordeal, Dezenatus mentioned that residents of the area had become fed up with the persistent problem of dogs roaming the neighborhood without a leash, which had led to the young boy getting attacked and drawing the attention of local media in the first place. Some residents no longer allowed their children to play outside or walk to school for fear of them falling victim to the aggressive dogs that prowled the area. The one that bit Dezenatus had reportedly been the subject of numerous other complaints, including from a delivery driver who claimed the animal charged him while he was on the job. The owner of the dog in question paid $360 in fines in the incident's aftermath. Number 17. Foul ball to the forehead. During a Major League Baseball game between the Colorado Rockies and San Francisco Giants in May of 2022, reporter Kelsey Wingert was struck in the forehead by a ball that had been hit into foul territory. In the game's final inning, Giants outfielder Austin Slater hit the errant line drive that careened out of bounds at 95 miles per hour and cracked Wingert in the head as she was sitting by the first base camera. The woman was taken to hospital where she reportedly spent five hours getting checked over. She required both internal and external stitches in the center of her forehead and also had a CT scan to check for internal bleeding and fractures, which came back clear. Wingert updated her fans on social media saying, I've never experienced support like this. Thank you for your prayers. Number 16, Wahida Wilson. Telmundo 62 reporter Iris Delgado was standing outside City Hall in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, during a live news broadcast on the evening of June the 8th of 2016. In the middle of Delgado's report, a woman suddenly walked up to her and started tapping her on the shoulder, repeatedly saying, Excuse me. The journalist initially ignored her and managed to finish up her segment and send it back to the studio in spite of her visitors' incessant attempts to get her attention. However, as the broadcast was turned back over to the in-studio anchors, the strange woman grabbed Delgado by the hair and sucker punched her in the face multiple times. Eventually, the reporter's colleagues were able to wrestle the assailant off of her. In the aftermath, investigators identified Delgado's attacker as 37-year-old Wahida Wilson, a high school dropout who'd reportedly been staying at a homeless shelter in the area. A month after the on-air incident, Wilson pleaded guilty to simple assault and was sentenced to 60 days in jail, with credit for time served. In court, she was very apologetic, though she neglected to provide a concrete reason for the attack on Delgado. Number 15. Attack on Lara Logan In early 2011, fiery political protests spread across Egypt, involving millions of demonstrators seeking the overthrow of President Hosni Mubarak. Large swaths of the nation's population carried out the protests, beginning on January the 25th, with a number of specific legal and political issues, including police brutality, freedom of speech, corruption, high unemployment, inflation and low wages. Following persistent demonstrations, marches, non-violent civil disobedience and strikes, the so-called Egyptian revolution culminated in the resignation of President Mubarak on February the 11th. On that day, CBS News correspondent Lara Logan was in Cairo's Tahrir Square covering the demonstrators' celebration of their successful rebellion. However, the overwhelmingly jovial mood of the festivities took a drastic turn for Logan when she was suddenly pulled away from her producer and bodyguard by a group of men. The assailants proceeded to tear the reporter's clothes, grope and beat her for an extended period of time. Later, in an interview with The New York Times, Logan estimated that there were a total of between 200 and 300 men involved in the prolonged assault, which she described as merciless. She was ultimately rescued by civilians and Egyptian soldiers, and after a stay in the hospital, flew back to the US. Logan decided almost immediately to talk publicly about her terrifying experience, indicating she wanted to speak on behalf of millions of voiceless women who are subjected to attacks like this and worse. Number 14, on-air emergency. NBC News correspondent Julia Ainsley rushed down to 10th Street and Pennsylvania Avenue Northwest in Washington, D.C. on May the 29th of 2019. She'd been sent there to cover special counsel Robert Mueller's first public statement after two years of a widely publicized presidential investigation. Ainsley appeared on live TV as part of MSNBC's panel of commentators and analysts. However, at one point during the broadcast, 
The woman showed obvious signs of distress before uttering, I'm gonna be sick and stepping out of frame. As she later revealed in media interviews about the incident, after moving off camera, she took off her earpiece, ran down the sidewalk and threw up in the bushes. Ainsley subsequently returned to the camera and checked her phone, whereupon she realized she'd received a multitude of concerned text messages from friends, family and colleagues asking her if she was okay. Although she publicly blamed the on-air medical emergency on dehydration, it later emerged that the reporter was actually pregnant and had been suffering from the effects of morning sickness. Ainsley gave birth to a healthy baby girl the following January. Number 13. Meteorologist Malfunction A Romanian television news broadcast went awry during a weather segment that was widely circulated online in March of 2016. While presenting the local forecast, 25-year-old Roxana Vansia began performing physical exercises on camera in an attempt to convey that the weather would be temperate enough to go outside. While she was running and jumping up and down, however, Vansia's breasts eventually became exposed above her low-cut top. Despite her severe wardrobe malfunction, the woman simply continued with the broadcast for several minutes thereafter, seemingly unaware of the slip-up. After Vansia finally readjusted her shirt, the camera cut to some of her colleagues behind the anchor desk, who looked shell-shocked by what had just transpired on live TV. When the clip went viral online, some viewers were skeptical of the whole thing, theorizing that it was simply a publicity stunt deployed by the station to increase ratings. Number 12. B versus Local News Reporter a video clip of a Wisconsin news reporter clashing with a pesky bee while preparing to go on live television went viral in the late summer of 2022. As subsequent reports revealed, the woman on the broadcast was Elaine Rojas Castillo, who was reporting for Milwaukee's TMJ4 News. The recording, which Rojas Castillo tweeted out herself, showed a bee flying into her airspace as she rehearsed her upcoming report. She initially tried to shoo it away with the back of her hand, but when that failed to deter the insect, she retreated with her head leaned back before scurrying out of frame. Rojas Castillo subsequently ran back and forth across the screen a couple of times as she evaded the airborne creature. After finally shaking the bee, the woman could be heard saying to the cameraman, If you recorded that, I hate you! Rojas Castillo captioned her tweet of the video with, I think it's safe to say, I don't like bees. Number 11. Melissa Lawrence On June the 2nd of 2013, a shooting broke out at a kindergarten graduation party in Providence, Rhode Island, resulting in the hospitalization of teen Nyasia Lawrence. The following day, local media outlets received word that the shooter responsible for the incident had turned himself in to the authorities. A crew affiliated with the station ABC6 was subsequently dispatched to the home of Nyasia's mother, Melissa, to get her reaction to the news that her daughter's alleged assailant was in custody. Provoked by the news crew's presence at her front door, the woman declined to speak with the reporter, Abby Nyes Goda, and chucked a rock at her cameraman, which narrowly avoided making direct contact with his head. Nyes Goda and her cam operator subsequently tried to retreat off Lawrence's property, but the latter allegedly came at them with a baseball bat spouting profanities. The 35-year-old homeowner then unleashed her two full-grown pit bulls on the crew. Video footage of the encounter showed the dogs chasing Nyas Goda down the street and into a neighbor's yard while relentlessly nipping at her. It was reported that she required treatment for a forearm bite in the incident's wake. When law enforcement caught wind of what had transpired, they took Lawrence into custody on two counts of felony assault. She was released on her own recognizance while Nyasia was reportedly discharged from the hospital after receiving treatment for the gunshot wound she had sustained to her lower back. Number 10. Viral on-air gaff. Journalist Natasha Exelby began working as a casual news presenter on the Australian Broadcasting Corporation's news channel back in 2017. Shortly after starting with the station, however, Exelby was involved in an embarrassing on-air incident that initially left the future of her broadcasting career in considerable doubt. While reading a Saturday night news bulletin on April the 8th of 2017, the woman momentarily became distracted, seemingly forgetting she was on live television following a pre-recorded segment. Exelby began fiddling with her nails before realizing that she was on air and gasping in 
what could only be described as an amalgamation of shock and horror. She then hastily introduced the upcoming segment while struggling to regain her composure. When the video clip of Exelby's gaff surfaced online, it instantly became a viral hit. Commenting on the video's popularity, the reporter said, I can understand why people found it funny, but I also have to take some responsibility here. I'm a professional, and what happened was far from professional. There were numerous stories published in the aftermath of the infamous blunder that indicated Exelby had been fired by the ABC. However, the corporation's news director refuted the widespread reports of her termination, clarifying that she was a freelance journalist not a staff member. Following the ordeal, Exelby maintained that ABC executives did, in fact, punish her for the mistake, claiming they didn't allow her to go live on air ever again and had offered her producing shifts instead. In February of 2023, it was reported that Exelby had resigned from her position at Network 10, where she'd been a consistent contributor in various roles since 2008. Number 9. Assault on Live TV Following the conclusion of a Serie A soccer match between Empoli FC and ACF Fiorentina on November the 27th of 2021, Italian reporter Greta Beccaglia was groped by a fan on live television. The woman was reporting outside the Castellani Stadium in Empoli when a rowdy spectator walked up behind her and touched her backside. Beccaglia immediately recoiled and told the man, excuse me, you can't do this. A different group of men subsequently walked in front of the camera and told the reporter, don't get cross. In the wake of the on-air incident, it was reported that Bacalia filed charges against the man, who was later identified as a 47-year-old restaurateur from Acona named Andrea Serrani. The latter was ultimately given a suspended 18-month jail sentence for assault. He was also ordered to pay 10,000 euros in restitution to Bacalia, as well as 5,000 euros to the Order of Journalists and the FNSI Union of Journalists. Bacalia called the outcome of the case a victory for all women, telling an Italian newspaper, nobody has the right to violate our rights, to consider our body as a trophy, nobody must humiliate us, denigrate us, consider us an object. Nobody. Number 8. Viral Chest Grab Rebecca Grant, who worked as an NFL correspondent for both Fox Sports and ESPN, made headlines in 2014 for grabbing her own breasts on live television. The woman was attending an NBA game between the Los Angeles Clippers and the Golden State Warriors when the incident occurred. She was positioned a few rows behind TNT commentators Reggie Miller and Kevin Harlan. At one point, while the camera was on Miller and Harlan, Grant seemingly took advantage of the fact that she was on live TV and in clear view of the cameras by gripping her cleavage, which was accentuated by her low-cut top. The video subsequently went viral online and even led to Grant being interviewed on a local Fox Sports affiliate station. That segment garnered online attention as well, as while she was answering questions, Grant grew increasingly agitated with somebody off camera. Number 7. Dog Steals Microphone During a live Russian news broadcast in the spring of 2021, reporter Nadezhda Sereskina had her microphone stolen right out of her hand by a dog. Sereskina, a correspondent for the outlet Mir24, was doing an on-location weather update when a particularly amiable golden retriever suddenly burst into frame and sunk its teeth into her multicolored microphone, perhaps mistaking it for a dog toy. The animal, whose name was later revealed to be Martin, yanked the handheld mic out of the reporter's grasp and took off, prompting Zeles Kina to give chase. The in-studio anchor carried on with the report as though nothing had happened, but Zeles Kina subsequently returned to the screen to provide an update. She was, in fact, able to retrieve her microphone from the klepto canine. The segment was punctuated by an apparent making of peace between Zeles Kina and Martin, who concluded their interaction with a shaking of paw and hand. Number 6. Vomit in Hermosa Beach An unpleasant incident unfolded in Hermosa Beach, California, on July the 4th of 2017. KTLA correspondent Wendy Birch was on location, reporting on an annual triathlon competition traditionally referred to as Iron Man. While interviewing a man in front of a raucous crowd of other spectators, something off-screen suddenly grabbed Birch's attention. The camera operator subsequently panned left to reveal a young woman throwing up on the sidewalk. Unfazed by the unsightly purge, 
Burj continued on with the interview before more projectile vomit suddenly went flying into frame from behind the camera. The reporter was hit directly in the face while the man she was interviewing had his arm and shoulder completely covered with vomit. The broadcast quickly cut away to the anchors in the studio who struggled to contain their laughter. In a crucial update she later gave to the Huffington Post, Birch revealed that the gentleman she'd been interviewing had a bullseye drawn on his back with the words puke here written in magic marker. Number 5. On-screen stroke Concerns were raised for an Oklahoma news anchor who became visibly confused and unable to read the teleprompter while reporting on a cancelled NASA launch on September the 3rd of 2022. The female reporter identified as Julie Chin was broadcasting on the Tulsa-based NBC affiliate station KJRH when the alarming incident occurred. After stumbling over her words for several seconds, Chin apologized to the viewers saying, I'm sorry, something is going on with me this morning. Meteorologist Annie Brown subsequently took the reins of the broadcast to provide a weather update after which Chin did not return. It ultimately emerged that following her on-air episode, she was rushed to a hospital where it was determined that she'd suffered the beginnings of a stroke. As of the latest available updates, it was unclear whether Chin was ever informed of what had triggered her on-screen medical emergency, but subsequent reports did indicate that she wasn't expected to suffer any long-term effects. Number 4. Pinky the Cat Sometime in the early 1990s, Animal Control in Placer County, California, filmed a promotional video for the county's Pet of the Week adoption program, which subsequently aired on local news stations. In the segment, which has since garnered international fame as a viral internet video, Animal Control Officer Carl Pritchard appeared with the domestic short hair cat whom he introduced as Pinky. Pritchard started off by describing the cat as very loving, then as though the compliment itself triggered a negative reaction in the animal, Pinky grew exceedingly agitated. The broadcast eventually devolved into utter chaos as the crazed cat slipped out of Pritchard's grasp and began feverishly darting back and forth, trying to break free from the leash to which he was tethered. At one point, Pinky's frantic contortions caused the leash to get tangled around Pritchard's legs. It was then that the feisty feline plunged his claws into the man's upper thigh, prompting him to cry out in pain. Pinky then grabbed onto Pritchard's leg with each of his clawed paws and sunk his teeth into the flesh near his groin, eliciting a second agonized scream from the officer. Upon being removed from the man's leg, Pinky promptly ran away and the broadcast ended as Pritchard was left doubled over in pain. Number 3. Overly Friendly Feline On July the 5th of 2012, Fox 17 reporter Nicole Di Donato was standing outside the newly minted Beer Hall in Grand Rapids, Michigan, known as Beer City, during a segment on the establishment's grand opening. While her report was being filmed, a stray cat suddenly climbed up the back of Di Donato's leg and mounted her shoulders, where it remained for the duration of the broadcast. When the animal first showed up, the reporter was noticeably alarmed by the sensation of an unknown creature scaling her body during her live television appearance. However, Di Donato conducted the remainder of the segment with impressive composure. As she sent the broadcast back to the anchors in the studio, Di Donato finally broke and started giggling uncontrollably, nearly falling to the sidewalk in the process. In the aftermath, Di Donata took to Twitter to comment on the humorous situation, describing herself as a cat owner who'd adopted two strays from the previous two cities in which she'd worked. In her post, the reporter did indicate she'd be attempting to avoid a similar situation from unfolding during a live segment in the future, saying, Learned my lesson never making eye contact with a cat before a live tease ever again. Today's topic was requested by Creole Smile, Timmy D3085 and Odyssey Island. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below. Number 2. A Tumble Down Bernie Chalet David Vassar, a Los Angeles Dodgers reporter on both television and radio, was injured during a pre-game broadcast prior to the team's matchup with the Milwaukee Brewers on August 17th of 2022. Subsequent reports detailed how Vassar 
had been filming a TV segment in which he would go down the slide that connects to Bernie Chalet, where the brewer's mascot Bernie is said to take residence. The news crew got footage of Vasek from the top of the slide the first time he made the descent, but he subsequently went down a second time in order to capture video as he reached the bottom. During his second trip down, however, the reporter turned sideways and was sent crashing into the padding at the base of the slide. He was taken to an urgent care facility where it was determined that he'd broken two bones in his right wrist and fractured six ribs. Despite his injuries, Vasek was back at American Family Field in Milwaukee by the game's fifth inning with a cast on his arm. Following the Dodgers' subsequent victory, catcher Austin Barnes playfully told the team reporter, that one was for you. I know you had a little accident today on the slide, so we all rallied for you. Number one, reporter in the line of fire. In March of 2022, Fox News reporter Benjamin Hall was critically injured while traveling in Ukraine. The man and his news crew had been covering the Russian invasion for the network when they suddenly found themselves in the midst of an attack by the occupiers. According to official reports on the incident, the vehicle in which Hall and his colleagues had been driving was fired upon and bombed by Russian troops outside Kiev. Cameraman Pierre Zakruski and Ukrainian producer Oleksandra Kovshinova were both killed in the onslaught. Hall eventually ended up in a hospital in Texas following what was described as a Herculean effort to get him back to the States by the Pentagon and a team of seasoned extraction experts. Nearly a year after his harrowing brush with death, which had left him with devastating injuries all over his body, Hall called into a Fox News program in January of 2023 and made his first live TV appearance since the attack. During the interview, Hall credited Zakruski, who was both his colleague and friend, with saving his life. The cameraman reportedly crawled out of the vehicle at one point, prompting Hall to follow. Shortly thereafter, the car was bombed for a third time. If Zakruski hadn't inspired him to crawl out, Hall said he likely would have died too. The reporter also detailed the extent of his injuries while expressing optimism for the future, saying, I've got one leg, I've got no feet, I see through one eye, got one workable hand, I was burned all over, and I feel stronger. I feel more confident than I ever have. Thanks for watching. Would you rather give a live news report from a war zone or walk the streets late at night with wads of cash in your hand? Let us know in the comments section below.